Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Off Farm Income Podcast. Hey, thank you so much for joining us here on our YouTube channel for episode number 1075. Everybody, we're going to head out to Tennessee today. We've got a great story of an emerging entrepreneur in the horse field, a young lady who loves teaching, loves horses, and has found a way to combine the two and does not have a horse facility at her home, but she found somebody to assist her with this. And I'll tell you what, very impressive young lady with all the research that she did in starting this business, all the liability that's associated with putting other people on your horses and how she has handled that well ahead of her time. And I'm very eager to introduce you to Miss Anna Collins from Sycamore High School in Pleasant View, Tennessee. We're going to get that started for you right now. Anna, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. And this is the first time I've ever had a farm animal on the camera with a guest. It's a brilliant idea. I didn't think of it. You did, obviously. But who is this with you on the camera here? This is Allie. She is my two-year-old Spanish Norman who's actually for sale. So I'm going to miss her. But, yeah, she's my girl. All right. So we've got Anna and Allie on the show. Yes. Okay. And have you trained Allie? I have. Yeah. Um we actually still have her mom on the property. So ever since she was, ever since she was born. Okay. Well, that's really cool. Well, thanks for sharing her with us today. I appreciate that. And uh, let's do this. I would love to learn a little bit more about you before we kind of get into all the FFA stuff. Uh, I'm assuming you live on a farm because you're in a barn with a horse. Am am I right about that? I actually don't live out here, but it's pretty, pretty, pretty close. It's just like a 20 minute drive from my house. So I'm close enough that I'm out here pretty much every day. Okay. So do you live in town then? And then you come out here to work with horses? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. And so, um, where is here? What's the name of the, of the farm that you're on right now? T-Bar Equine Training. Okay. And that's going to be the title of your SAE when we get to that, right? Yes. Okay. Very cool. All right. Now, how long have you been part of the FFA? Um, ever since my freshman year, so about three years. This is my third year. Okay, this is your third year. And why did you join? What brought you into the organization? I actually worked in a different horse farm, and several <laughs> of our girls that worked there with me, they were in FFA at the same high school, and they kept telling me, like, as soon as you're in, like, you've got to join, you've got to join, Hi, you've got to join. And so I did, and I ended up really loving it, so I stuck around. That's great. Good. I'm glad for you. So how long have you been around horses? Has this been your whole life? Um, Ever since I was about six. So 11 years, and then, you know, training on my own for the past, you know, three, four. Okay. So how did that come about? How did you get introduced to horses, and how did you wind, out, wind up coming out to this ranch? Um, my dad had horses when he was little, so I'd kind of always heard stories, but I watched the Kentucky Derby and just really liked it. And I was like, that's something I want to do and begged and begged and begged my parents. And finally they put me in lessons and, and here we are. Okay. Awesome. Well, good for you. All right. So I got to ask you, uh, we were talking off the air, but I got to ask you about this t-shirt you're wearing. So friends, this, oh, my friend shirt. <laughs> so this show, this show started right before I went to college and then it, it was in its prime, its heyday while I was going to college. So that really dates me. Um, but how in the world did you get involved in watching this show to where you would buy one of their shirts? Uh, it's my mom's favorite show. And so I watched it. Actually, I watched, I want to say the first like three seasons after I fell off a horse and got hurt. And so <laughs> that was my entertainment through recovering from that injury. Okay. Um, and then my mom got me the shirt for Christmas because oh. we love it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was saying this off the air. Occasionally that'll pop up on Netflix or something. And I'll watch an episode or two. But if I hear my wife or my daughter come home, I have to shut it off really quick. I get really embarrassed. That I'm watching that again. <laughs> All right. Well, let's do this. I would love to, uh, well, wait, before I do that, you are currently serving as your chapter's president, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's talk about that a little bit. So how did you get involved in that? Why did you want to be on the officer team? I, our chapter was huge for several years and then slowly our ag program kind of died down a little bit. We lost a lot of interest. 
But coming in, I found a lot of really great things about it and wanted to get it started back up. I wanted to start more competition teams, get everybody else Mm. involved and really show them that we we kind of still got it going on. We can still do that. And I joined the officer team my sophomore year as the vice president and then president this year, uh, just really trying to get more involvement in. That was my number one priority. Okay. And how has that gone? It's gone really, really well. I actually, we started a junior officer program. So upcoming freshmen last year filled out applications, came in, interviewed with us, and we selected four of them. And so they've kind of been job shadowing in a way, watching uh, the head officer team, getting to know what each role does, getting to see what it takes to run a chapter. And of course, they've had kind of a funky year. So it's not been quite the same. It was an odd year to start a new program, Mm -hmm. but everybody's loved it. And I think all of them are planning on coming on in agriculture in some way, whether it's through FFA, their own jobs, or uh, eventually joining the head officer team. Awesome. Okay. Well, good job. That sounds great. And uh, yeah. And I want to ask you a little bit more about this background before I move on. So you're out, you're in the horse barn right now. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Now, so much of what I'm seeing in your background makes sense. Uh, of course, all the helmets for, for riding make sense, but mm-hmm. it appears to me that there's a net for like skimming the surface of a swimming pool behind you. You're going to have to explain um, that one to me. We have a big trough and this one especially likes to take mouthfuls of hay and walk all the way across to the trough and then drop the hay in there. Uh-huh. And instead of having to drain 150 gallons every time I, ju- I just use that, it just makes my life a little bit easier. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. So. I don't know if it's the right term. She likes her hay al dente. Is that the right term? I can't <laughs> I can't remember. Okay, very good. Well, let's do this. How many FFA advisors do you have uh, there at Sycamore High School? We just have one. Just one. Who is that? Let's acknowledge that person. That is Tony Holly. She is the best. Awesome. Okay, thank you for doing that. Uh, let's talk about your supervised agricultural experience. So what is it that you've been doing? So back in September, I started my own lesson business. So now I use my horses and I teach, I've got about 10 kids right now and I teach them how to ride. And then I also take on a few different training clients. So people will bring me their horses to get them started or like a refresher. They've had some time off. So I just work with horses all the time and that's, it's my favorite thing to do. So it really works out. Oh, I'm super happy for you. You know, my high school years were just one after another jobs that I never wanted to do again. But for you, you're getting to do something you really enjoy every day. It definitely started having to work inside and working in a restaurant and just not being happy inside all the time. Uh I enjoyed being around the people, but it just wasn't the same. And so I was like, well, what can I do about that? And ended up deciding on this and it's worked out pretty well so far. (laughs) Good. (laughs) Allie's done. She just shut that door. Yeah, she's leaving. Yeah. She's she's over it. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's great. I'm really happy for you. Now, uh, so T Bar Equine Training, is that the name of your business? Yes. Okay. So that's your uh riding lessons business as well as the the training that you do. Yes, sir. Okay. So tell me about this place where you're at then. Is this part of is this your family's? place that's 20 minutes away from home explain to me how that all works so i actually worked another horse barn for a little bit and i met this family i taught their daughter for a while and i knew that their mare was pregnant and i was like oh baby horse that's exciting so i uh, got to know them really well started coming out here more um ended up working with the baby and now they're like my second family my second parents and they help me out a lot by letting me, I keep my horse on their property. I train out of their property. Um, and they've, they've just been super supportive and helpful also. Okay. That's awesome. So you adopted them and, uh, it turned into a business for you. Oh yeah. Okay. So you, so your customers that you're training to ride, you're giving lessons to, they're coming out to this family's farm and then they're riding on their property and you're providing the lessons there. Yes, sir. Okay. Interesting. How long have you been doing this as a business? How long have you been getting paid to do this? September of 2020 okay. is when I started. So you're so it's relatively new. Yeah, you're not even in a year into it yet. How how do you like being a business owner? I love it actually. I've always kind of been very like business minded. I guess is the best way to put it. Okay. 
Uh, I've always wanted to do my own thing and it just so happens that this is an option. So I've enjoyed it. It's got its ups and downs, but it's, I've, ta- I've learned a lot. It's taught me a lot. That is great, man. I'm really happy for you. Now, I, the first question that comes to mind to me, and I'm thinking business minded as well, is liability. So if you're going to be putting people on horses, I mean, obviously you've got the helmets behind you. Uh, you're thinking safety with your clients and the, and the people you're providing lessons to. How do you deal with that um, with the family who's allowing you to teach riding lessons there on their property? How do they deal with uh, the potential liability that's brought to them by you giving lessons at their place and using their facilities? So we each have our own separate insurance. They have their property insurance actually covers the horses okay. as well. And then my insurance with the LLC covers just myself and then also anything that may happen when if I have somebody out here and then there are waivers for both, but uh, okay. ultimately yeah, safety is definitely a priority. We okay. take that super seriously. All of us. Got it. And I was, I was looking at that, that you have formed your business into an LLC. Obviously that's for liability protection, I would assume. Yes. Okay. Were you able to do that as a 17 year old or did you have to have an adult sign in that for you? So my mom is the main person on the LLC okay. and I'm also under her on that. But at, on my birthday, we have it set up where I'll be able to transfer it to okay. just myself. To just you. Wonderful. That is great. Uh, how did you learn about LLCs? How did you learn about that business entity and know that that was the right one for you? I just started researching, you know, like horse training insurance, horse riding instructor insurance, how to start your own horse training business. And, you know, reading articles, there are plenty of resources from mm-hmm. people that have done the same thing. Uh, just talking through their process, what they wish they would have known beforehand, what they did wrong, what they did right. And through that, I kind of just figured out, okay, well, here's what's working for all these other people. So let me give that a shot and see how it goes. Okay. And then you have a waiver form. Is that something that you found online? Something that you hired somebody to write for you? How did you come up with that? So we found there's several for boarding and training too. Uh, just outlines and then you fill it in with your own stuff. And I forget the name of the association now, but there's like one that most people use. It's pretty universal and you just, it covers everything you can possibly think of. Okay. And it's like the most recognized one, I guess. Okay, man, that's really good. Really sophisticated. This, uh, this business, did you, did you dream it up and go, I want to start a business where I'm providing lessons or Was it more somebody came to you and said, hey, would you please give me lessons? And you went, oh, my goodness, this could be a business. How did that how did that originate for you? I always kind of wanted to teach, but I was never, I guess, brave enough to be like, "Okay, I'm doing this. But my stepbrother knew that I rode and always wanted to ride and would ask and ask and ask. And finally, his mom was like, well, do you? go see if Anna will teach you. And I agreed to it and I loved it from the get go. And then his friends would start asking and they wanted lessons and okay. other people in the community. It just kind of slowly started to build itself. And I was like, oh, okay. So I'm really doing this now. Like this is, this is what's happening, okay. but I've, I've loved it. And when you're teaching, do you, do you teach uh, Western English? I mean, tell me how you get started with somebody. So primarily I wrote, I've got training in both Western and English. I was started English simply for the balance reason. You've got less to hold on to. And so it forces you to learn how to balance. And that's kind of my, my take on it as well. So all of my kids have started English. If any of them wanted, came to me and were like, no, I want to ride Western. Then I would happily make that happen. I am a dressage rider and a jumper. So that is obviously where I hope all my kids want to end up is okay. doing dressage with me. But I reigned for a while so and did some pleasure riding too. So really, it's up to the kids. I let them decide. I just want them to have fun. Okay. And so you, I mean, I know you're new into this. You, you just got, well, September. So we're what, eight months into this about. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you wish you had known when you first started that you know now? Oh, wow. Um, I guess it picked up a lot of traction way faster than I was expecting. So I was really quickly having to start, okay, well, how many lessons can I actually do in a week? How many lessons can my horses do in a week? Mm -hmm. What does that look like with, for my clients? What can I take on? What can I not? 
And I wish I would have had those numbers drawn out beforehand. So instead of having the last minute scramble and be like, oh, wait, now I have five more people and where do I put them? Um, but I think we got it worked out pretty quickly. And so I've got a waiting list going and everything. But I think we've found our happy number during the week. And okay. that'll change some in the summer when we're not all in school. Okay. And how did you get the word out? How did you find those first customers? So a lot of it was through um, Anderson was my first student and all of his friends wanted to, oh, you ride horses. And so their okay. parents would talk to mine and that's kind of how that got started. So I did end up setting up a website, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, joining a bunch of like horse based Facebook groups for the area. And anytime I had an opening, I'd post about it. Anytime a training opening comes open, I post about it. So lots of social media. Okay, very good. Well, this is really interesting because you started this business uh, after your senior year had actually already begun. Uh, oh, excuse me, after your junior year had already begun. I apologize. And now, has that has that changed your thoughts about what the future is going to look like for you uh, now that you're running your own business? Like, did you have a plan before you started this business? Maybe when I'll go to college or something like that, and I'll study X, Y, or Z. And now maybe that shifted. Has there been any change in in long-term planning? It definitely has changed. It's it's gotten real different. Um, I wanted to work in law enforcement for a really, really long time. I didn't know exactly what, but something in that area. And then, and obviously I always wanted to stay around horses, but I never thought that it would be my job. Well, now that it is, and I really loved it. So I think I'm going to go to school and I'm going to teach ag for a little bit and be an advisor. And then, you know, that gives me my whole summer to focus on training and teaching and then eventually go full time with that. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. I worked in law enforcement 15 years. I was a police officer and a detective. So yeah, Anna, I want to recommend uh, episode number 1030 of my show for you. I interviewed the founder of an online organization called Net Posse. And not that I'm trying to get you to go into law enforcement, but Obviously, that's my background. I found a way to kind of combine that with my love of agriculture. Um, but if you do have that interest in law enforcement and investigations, there's routes you can go there too. I think that'd be a really interesting interview to listen to just because uh, the lady uh, that was the guest on the show, she has unbelievable stories. Um, they found horses that have been stolen like seven years later. It's really, really incredible. Oh, Wow. Yeah, pretty. Yeah, I'll definitely check that out. Yeah, pretty incredible stuff. Well, that's great. Well, I'm happy that you're gonna you're gonna go into the classroom. Obviously, you you have that interest in law enforcement, but you love to teach. You're out here teaching uh, people how to ride. So having you in the classroom as an ag advisor would be a real asset. But you have long term plans of entrepreneurship. It sounds like. Oh yeah, for sure. This um, it'll be interesting to see how it stands up through college not being at home, but I definitely, you know, regardless of how that happens, I'll pick it back up eventually for sure. Sure. Yeah. Do you have any idea where you want to go to school yet? Uh, Middle Tennessee State University, MTSU. They have a really fantastic equestrian team that I would love to get to ride Uh with. So, and they have a good ag, um, ag teacher program as well. That is great. Oh, wonderful. Well, I'm very excited for you. Uh, before we wrap it up, I would love to ask you uh, your advice for other students out there. Students who are, I mean, obviously you're, you found the way to do this business. I mean, running a horse riding lesson and training business is not easy if you don't have your own horse facility, but you found a way to get it done. What advice would you have for somebody out there who doesn't have all the resources, but they got a dream of starting something like you did? Network, find people in the community go to your extension agents, go to your advisors, go to other people that maybe do have the facilities and just ask them, just ask questions and see, you know, if maybe that's something you could get started or, you know, if that if doing it on your own property or whatever is not an option, find someone that would be willing to help you because I guarantee you, you may have to look and you may have to really connect with a few different people before you find the person. But, you know, most people in the industry want to keep it going. They want more people to stay involved in agriculture. So I'm sure somebody would be willing to help you. You've just got to, it's worth the time and the energy to put the work in to find somebody. That is great. Okay. So how do people find you on social media? What are your handles if they want to know more? At T-Bar Training and at T-Bar Horses on Instagram and on Facebook, it's just T-Bar Equine Training, LLC. Awesome. Anna, thank you so much. This has been great. Thank you. 
Thank you for being here, everybody. And thank you again to Anna Collins for coming on the Off Farm Income Podcast today. Hey, we would love it if you would click that subscribe button below and become a subscriber to our YouTube channel here. And we would love to connect with you on social media. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And everybody, until next time, enjoy your journey to the ultimate lifestyle business, agriculture.